Thank you for joining us today for our virtual workshop called Fire Safety During the Holidays. My name is Amanda Bollig, and I'm the program specialist here at Loud and Habitat for Humanity. I oversee our home repair program as well as the Tools for Life Learning Center. We're going to dive right into things because we have a lot to discuss today. So we'll start with some of our goals for today's workshop. We're going to start off by talking about some home heating safety tips, especially since it's starting to get much colder outside. Then we'll talk about some safe cooking tips for when you're cooking those big holiday meals. We'll also discuss decorating safely for the holidays, and we'll wrap things up with some fire safety tips that you should keep in mind all year round. Joining us today is Lisa Braun Montalvo. Lisa is the public education manager here at Loudoun County, and she is responsible for coordinating and conducting fire safety presentations just like this one today to help educate our Loudoun County residents on some of the fire hazards that are around your home. So thank you, Lisa, for joining us today. If you have questions for Lisa during the course of her presentation, what you can do is go ahead and type those into the chat box. We'll make sure that we answer those questions at the end of the presentation. But if you have a question that you don't wanna forget, by all means, go ahead and put that into the chat box when you think of it, and we'll keep track of that, but we won't answer till the end of the presentation. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass things off to Lisa, and she's gonna get us started with some heating tips. Ah, hello, good afternoon. I'm glad you guys all took a minute from your day to learn a little bit more about fire safety. Um, I work out of the fire marshal's office, which is one of the sections of the Loudoun County Fire Rescue Department. And our focus is completely on fire prevention. Now, as the weather is getting colder, um, you know, December, January, February is when we see a large increase of home heating fires. So as you're kind of turning up the heat in your house, just make sure that you're aware of some of the things that are going on that you can help protect yourself from being safe. So no matter what heating system you utilize, just make sure that it's inspected and cleaned every single year by a professional. Now, based on the type of system you have, that, what that looks like may be a little bit different. So just make sure you look at whether you're using an HVAC system, whether you use a fireplace, uh, pellet stove, anything like that. Make sure you refer to the manufacturer's instructions on how to best maintain that. Another big issue that we tend to see is keeping items that can burn at least three feet away from heat sources. Um, the one reason why fires occur most is that we unfortunately get items that can burn too close to anything that gets hot, and then that's why the fire occurs. So when it comes to home heating, specifically when we're talking about fireplaces or wood stoves, make sure that there is a glass or metal screen in front of that fireplace to make sure that embers or sparks are not jumping out and getting on the carpeting or rug that's potentially nearby. Never burn any type of uh, paper in your fireplace that causes an increased buildup um, within the flu. Make sure that before you go to sleep that the fire is fully extinguished. A lot of times fires can smolder for long periods of time, so you want to make sure it's completely out before you go to sleep or before you leave the home. Now, if it's producing ashes, make sure that you dispose of them properly. Put them in a metal container with a lid outside away from your home or any other structure. Um, like I mentioned just now, uh, ashes can burn for days at a time. And once you kind of get them outside, we think that they're out and that's not always the case. A little bit of heat can generate and cause a fire. When it comes to space heaters, sometimes if you live in an older home or even if you don't live in an older home, you need a little bit of extra heat boost. So you may uh, enlist a space heater in order to do that. So most space heaters um, will have a requirement that when they tip over, that they will automatically shut it off. If you have an older model, it may not have that feature. So just be aware of what it does and does not do. When you have the option, make sure it has that special shut off feature. When you're going to bed, going to sleep, shut off that space heater. Make sure all the space heaters are plugged directly into those wall outfits. You should never be using an extension cord or power strip to power the device directly. You should always be plugging that directly into a wall outlet. And of course, um, as with many electronics, but you need to be sure that the portable fire heater is from a recognized testing laboratory. There are lots of different companies out there that put their label on the items. Sometimes it's UL, sometimes you'll see in ETL, sometimes it's an FM. As long as it has that label, that lets you know that it meets industry safety standards. 
So it is that time of year. We just got done with Thanksgiving and now we're moving on to Christmas where we have lots of guests and family around the house. And we want to just be sure that we're safe when we have all that commotion going on because distracted cooking is a common cause of fires. But yet, um, in the kitchen, they will leave the they will leave the kitchen because they get distracted by a guest or the phone ringing or checking email, whatever the case is, and that food gets left on the stove. And so that unintended cooking becomes a problem. So stay in the kitchen when you're frying, boiling, boiling, grilling, or broiling. Um, if you're baking, simmering, roasting, make sure that you are checking it frequently. And if you need to use a timer or, you know, carry a wooden spoon around with you, something that will remind you to continually check on that food that's, that's in the oven. Keep anything that can burn away from the stovetop. So just like with the heating appliances, anything that gets hot, whenever it touches something that can burn, it can cause a fire. So whether it's food packaging, curtains, towels, oven mitts, anything like that, make sure you keep it away from the stovetop or any other heating appliance. Um, keep children and pets at least three feet away from the stove. Have that nice kid and pet free zone. Um, and not only keeping them away from those hot appliances, but understanding that dishes can be hot, uh, hot liquids can be in the area. Um, steam from vegetables and that kind of stuff can, can become a burn hazard. So, well, kids and pets tend to be the most common offenders. Um, it can happen to us adults as well. So just be very cautious that we don't unintentionally cause any uh, opportunities to have serious burns. Obviously, keeping those sharp knives out of the reach of individuals who shouldn't have them. And then make sure that if, you're, if you have electrical cords from electric a uh, mixer, coffee maker, warmer, anything like that. It's not dangling off the counter and becoming a, a hazard for the kids. We're gonna watch a quick short video here on, now that it's that time of year, some holiday safety. So no matter what holiday you're celebrating in the winter season, there's lots of different safety tips to keep in mind when you're decorating. Um, primarily making sure that any decorations you do, do choose um, are flame resistant or flame retardant. A lot of times you'll see um, artificial Christmas trees will have a certain standard that they meet saying that they have that flame resistant uh, chemical on them that helps protect them. Um, anytime you're posting lights, just make sure that they're listed by that qualified testing laboratory I mentioned earlier. And lights are very specific to indoor or outdoor use. So make sure that you're using them properly. Um, we tend to keep those lights for long periods of time. So ensuring that they're not broken or worn, um, the wires themselves aren't exposed is really a key factor. And not only that, but making sure that they are, you're only attaching so many lights together at a time. Um, it sounds very silly to say sometimes, but making sure that you read the manual or keeping one of those manuals with you um, kind of in your decorations as you stow them away will help serve as that reminder and you know, those quick tips of, wait, how many can I put together again? <laughs> Um, when you're posting any decorations and especially lights, make sure that you're using appropriate clips and you're not using nails or anything else that could damage the cords. And then keep any decorations away from doors or windows. Um, you don't want them blowing into a heat source or and having anything cause that type of issue. Candles are very popular and they're beautiful and we love to have them in the home. We just wanna make sure we're using them uh, in a smart manner. So they do make candles now that are battery operated flameless candles. So utilizing those, they even flicker, they even sometimes have scents. They're a great alternative to using them um, than using real candles because they don't contain that flame. Um, 
especially when it comes to religious purposes when the candles will be lit for an extended period of time. Um, if you do choose to use a regular candle with that flame on it, just making sure that you're keeping those candles 12 inches away from anything that can burn. And that means, you know, curtains that can blow in the window or anything like that, just to be aware of those types of things. Um, blowing those candles out at the end of the night uh, or when they are no longer being supervised by a responsible adult. Um, fire can grow very quickly and it moves very quickly. So we just wanna make sure we're taking every extra precaution that we can during the holidays. Um, keeping pets and children away from lit candles. It's a fun time of year and we're goofing off and having a good time, but they can unintentionally bump into those, those, uh, those candles. And then making sure if you're using lighters and matches that you keep them up in high locked cabinet because kids do get curious. And when they see others using the tools, sometimes they feel like they can use it too. So we wanna make sure that we're being responsible adults and putting those things out of reach of children. So when you're picking a Christmas tree, you wanna make sure that you're picking the freshest Christmas tree that you could find, which means when you touch the branches, the needles are not falling off immediately. That's a sign that it's already dehydrated um, and you're probably not gonna be able to bring it back to full capacity. Uh, making sure that when you're placing that tree, you're doing it in the stand and you're gonna cut a few inches off of the base because that's gonna increase the water flow and encourage it to drink up some of that to help retain some of the moisture. Um, make sure that the tree is away from any heat sources. So that could be the uh, vent, heating vent, it could be the fireplace, it could be a space heater because that's gonna cause the tree to dry out more quickly. Make sure the tree is not blocking the exit of any kind. So we haven't talked about home escape plans, but if there is a fire, we wanna be sure that all the possible exits are available to get out of the home safely. If you're choosing that real tree, they are beautiful, but you need to water them regularly. Those trees drink a lot more water than we realize. So we wanna make sure that we keep that tree stand full of water. Make sure at the end of the night, you're turning out all of those Christmas tree lights before you're leaving or that you're going to bed that night. And of course, last but not least, when we get to that end of the season, I know we always wanna hold on to the holidays a little bit longer and stretch it out. But once that tree is starting to get dried out, it's really important that it gets disposed of in the proper manner. There are plenty of different places. A lot of HOAs have ways to, to dispose of the trees, but also the, the, um, the landfill. And there's other ways to, to properly dispose of the Christmas trees. Now, some individuals, whether you celebrate Diwali or you, we have the Chinese New Year coming up uh, at the beginning of the year and into February, some individuals choose to utilize fireworks. Fireworks can be great fun, um, but they are also very dangerous. They are an explosive object. So from the fire department standpoint, we encourage you to attend a public fire fireworks display whenever possible. Those individuals are trained. They have to have certain safety precautions in place. Um, they have to have permitting and it makes the entire situation a whole lot safer. Now, if you choose to purchase your own fireworks, um, a few extra safety tips to keep in mind would be to fireworks based on the different localities have different laws that dictate what is and is not legal. So if you're purchasing fireworks within Loudoun County, that's fantastic. It's going to meet the uh, local ordinance. Now, if you are choosing to purchase Fireworks at a different locality, it may not meet our uh, legality standards and can become an issue, especially anything that leaves the ground or anything like that was, would be a concern for the fire department. If you do choose to use the ground-based fireworks, just make sure that it's on an open, stable, flat surface that's been soaked thoroughly so we don't have any unintentional dried uh, vegetation unintentionally starting on fire. Um, only responsible, uh, sober adults should be the ones uh, igniting and kind of overseeing the uh, use of those fireworks. Um, once the firework has been utilized and expended, we wanna be sure that they are placed in a metal container soaked with water and they're allowed to cool overnight. It's similar to the uh, ashes from a fireplace and making sure that whatever container we do put them in, we put them a safe distance from the home. Well, they have been used, we need to be sure they can still be hot and they can still become a burn hazard, especially if there's other things in the trash or anything like that that are there. So soaking them in water is key along with placing them in that uh, metal or ceramic container with a lid away from the home. 
if there's a misfire of a firework of any kind, we wanna be sure that we are let, leaving it be for about 20 minutes before disposing of those duds. And then you're gonna treat them exactly like you would a spent firework. So all year round, the fire department, we're always talking about smoke alarms and making sure that we have smoke alarms in your home. Um, smoke alarms, the ideally, we would like to see them located on each level of the house outside any sleeping area, which is usually a hallway, and then inside each bedroom. The more alarms that are there to alert you, the sooner you will be alerted to the fire, the more time you have to get out safely. You only have about three minutes from when that smoke alarm sounds and when the fire begins to actually get out of the home safely. So early notification is key. Now, a lot of times here in Loudoun County, uh, especially a lot of the newer homes, we actually have the smoke alarms, but we also need to be sure that we're maintaining them properly. So testing that alarm each month. There's a test button on each alarm. Press and hold that test button. You'll get three beeps. You know you're set to go. If you press that button and get something other than three beeps, it's your indication that something is wrong. Perhaps the battery needs to be changed. Perhaps the unit is too old. Uh, there could be lots of different issues. So that at that point, you need to adjust either the battery or completely change the smoke alarm itself. Oftentimes we hear that middle of the night chirping sound, which is indication that the battery itself needs to be replaced. Even if you have a hardwired smoke alarm, you will have a battery backup within that in the event that you were to lose power, it would still function as needed. If you have a high vaulted ceiling and are not comfortable or not comfortable getting on ladders, um, you may want to, to purchase a long life battery, and that will not only eliminate those middle of the night chirps, but when it does start to chirp, that's likely going to be the indication that smoke alarms themselves are outdated and need to be replaced. Just like any other electronic, a smoke alarm should be replaced every 10 years. So smoke alarms are a key component and involved in your home escape plan. Um, each family, we have such a diverse area here and all different types of family, multi-generational families. It's fantastic to have all that love in a household, but we do need to make sure that we have a plan and a plan that works for everyone. So whether you have very young children, whether you have older children, whether you have grandparents living with you or old, other older adults, is everyone able to get out of that home safely in the event of a fire? So the two most common things to keep in mind is you should know two ways out of each room within the house. So no matter which room you're in, you can identify this is my first way out. If that's blocked by fire, I need to go to the second way out. The second thing involved in a home escape plan is having a family meeting place outside. So once everyone gets outside, everyone should go to that same place. One, so that way you know that your family or whoever you live with has gotten out safely, but also it allows you to tell the firefighters if someone's missing or um, if they need to go in and help someone or if everyone has gotten out safely. And that helps keep us as the firefighters safe. And we appreciate that a lot. Um, when it comes to home escape plans, practicing is the key. Well, you can create that map of your house and show those two ways out and pick your meeting place. When there is an actual fire emergency, we naturally get anxious and nervous because that's not a normal thing. So we don't start thinking as clearly as we should. So having that home escape plan and practicing that home escape plan is really important. So should we ever encounter a fire? We know exactly how to respond. We know if plan A doesn't work, okay, I gotta go to my second way out. Um, you know, you have a plan for who's gonna get the young child, who's helping the older adult out that may need assistance because they have mobility issues. Always have a plan. And once you're outside, always stay outside. The firefighters will come, we can get any pets, we can get anything that you need. Um, but once you're outside, stay outside, that's where it's safest. Um, with all the home heating, we also have carbon monoxide can come into play. If you have any fuel burning appliances or an attached garage, uh, you likely would need a carbon monoxide alarm. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, uh, gas that occurs when fuel does not burn completely. And the only way to detect that in the home is to have that carbon monoxide alarm. Now, that's very different than um, a lot of times people will say, well, I smell gas, I smell fuel in the house. Um, that's usually before the fuel has been burned and that's a chemical that is put in the fuel. So you can smell it on the front end if you can notice any issues or anything like that. But carbon monoxide is after it has been burning and it isn't burning properly. Carbon monoxide should be on and the carbon monoxide alarm should be on each level of the home, um, especially right outside a sleeping area um, in the hallway. 
just like smoke alarms, you're gonna test them every month, change the battery as needed. They are gonna get changed a little bit more frequently. It can be anywhere from five to seven years based on the manufacturer, but make sure that you follow that, look at that manual, follow those guidelines in order to ensure that yours will be working properly. There is my contact information. If you need any assistance, um, we also have a smoke alarm program. So if you need smoke alarms and cannot afford them, we do have a smoke alarm program that you can request alarms through and we will come out do a home safety or a smoke alarm assessment, make sure that you're covered, make sure things are working properly. Because while we are the experts and sometimes we think everyone knows what to do, uh, we know that's not always the case. So we're here to not only be there for you, but help educate you so you can feel confident in properly maintaining your home. Well, thank you, Lisa, for that wonderful presentation. I know I certainly learned a lot. I hope everybody else did as well. We are just going to um, kind of bookend things here with uh, talking about some of our key points that we learned about from today's workshop. So first of all, we learned that you need to keep anything that can burn at least three feet away from those heat sources. We talked about that it's really important for you to stay in the kitchen while you're cooking and keep an eye on things and regularly be checking things. Of course, it's really important to be careful with our holiday direction, uh, decorations. They're so beautiful. We want to make sure that nothing happens to those or the rest of our house. So keep those decorations either flame resistant or flame retardant. And then finally, we talked about some of those fire safety tips to keep in mind all year round, like checking your smoke alarms, your carbon monoxide detectors, and having that home escape plan. If you've got any questions for Lisa, now would be the time to go ahead and enter those into the chat box and we'll spend just a couple of minutes talking about those. To get us started, I did have just a couple of questions for you. Um, the first question I had is, I know we talked about um, not just fireworks, but would it be safe or is it recommended to have a professional use the firecrackers or any other sort of similar celebratory item? So the best thing to do is if you can't buy it in Loudoun County, it's probably not safe for you to be using. Um, actually, what we do here in the county is every year they go through and they do um, a survey of people who want to sell fireworks and the different types, and they do tests and things like that to make sure that they're not faulty. And the ones that are faulty don't make the list. The uh, Loudoun County Fire Rescue website actually lists all the different permissible fireworks that are allowed, as well as lists the firework shows, as well as lists the vendors. So if they have specific questions about what can I use this firework or where can I buy them, all that information is on our website. Very good, thank you. Um, I know we talked about the home escape plan. If I'm having some trouble coming up with how to make my escape plan, are there any resources that you know of that we could use? Uh, I believe so if you're making a home escape plan, there are resources there. Uh, the National Fire Protection Association has um, some very good fire safety stuff. They set a lot of the standards actually when it comes to fire safety, home escape planning, smoke alarms, all that good stuff. Um, the US Fire Administration also works hand in hand with them as well um, to make sure that those resources are available. Um, I believe uh, in the chat box, they actually posted a link to one of our uh, sheets that you can print off and sit down with your family and make sure you have a proper plan. Very good. Okay. And I know we just had a question come into the chat box that's asking if you could elaborate a little bit more on um, some safety regarding a wood stove and why it's not safe to use paper in the wood stove. So generally when it comes to burning in a wood stove, you know, we encourage the hard um, dried out uh, wood because um, that burns more completely. It burns a little bit better when it comes to paper and things like that. It doesn't I mean, if you've ever noticed when you put paper in the fireplace, you see the little pieces of ashes floating around and that can cause a lot of buildup within the flue itself, which needs to be cleaned much more regularly and can get out potentially of the flue and out of the chimney and float through the air and all that good stuff. So, you know, we just really recommend that's not what those fireplaces are or wood stoves are intended for. Um, and it can just, it can cause bigger issues, which obviously we want to avoid. Right, and you had recommended to have everything cleaned out once a year, correct? So your flu and that sort of thing. Yeah, so at least once a year. Now, if you're someone who uses it more frequently um, and based on what you're burning within there, you may need to do it more often, but as a standard practice, we say at least once a year. Very good, okay. And then the last question that we have for you is regarding the smoke alarm program. Is that a free program for individuals to use? It is a free program and there's a link on our website where you can send in a request and that actually comes to me um, we go in, we test the smoke alarms, we assist you, uh, residents with changing on batteries if they need it. 
We may make recommendations on additional locations if necessary. And then we also make sure that they're not outdated. So our fire personnel at the stations are actually the individuals that schedule that and come out um, to do that assessment for residents. Very good. That's a, a wonderful program that I know I've referred many people over to and they do an excellent job. So I highly recommend if you're unsure about whether your smoke alarms are working or if you're maybe an older adult who's not able to get up on that ladder anymore and check your smoke alarms to certainly utilize this program. And we just put a link into our chat box for you to go ahead and do that. Well, that is all the questions that we have today. So we're gonna go ahead and close things out. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Lisa, for that great presentation. Thank you. If you're curious about Loudon Habitat for Humanity or maybe our Tools for Life Learning Center, you can go ahead and check out our website, which is up on the screen right now and in the chat box, loudonhabitat.org slash tools for life. We upload all of our recorded workshops onto our website, just like this one. So if you had something that you missed and want to write it down, you can go back and watch that recording. We also have our upcoming web, uh, webinars listed on our website as well. So our next workshop is gonna be January 13th, and we're gonna be discussing home warranty policies and how they work with a professional who uh, knows quite a bit about home warranty policies and can advise you on whether or not that's the right fit for you. So we hope that you will join us for that workshop on January 13th, and you can register on our website for that. I wish you all a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you all again soon.